into uh, gasoline for uh, gas gasoline tanks and cars. And what this is doing is this combination means that we have become a net importer of food. We no longer export um, food because we have so much that we um, produce. We now are dependent on foreign countries for our food as well. And this is not a good sign for us either. And most people don't know that we're having to import more and more food because we're producing less and less. Yes. Concerning stuff. Very. All right. Now, um, I'm going to um, approach the Navy program uh, that, that you have there, the Navy programs. Rosalind, I live in a coastal area that uh, protects the marine life. Every day I see a fog from my bedroom window. I live, you know, on the sea. We have the mountains behind us. So I'm positioned to watch the spraying happening over our southern Alps and, you know, the, the, this cloud mass uh, uh, that is now permanently there across our horizon. It's been there visibly for at least two years and uh, they, they used to call this locally the um, easterly, but the easterly fog's visible in a northwester, a southerly, in, in, in all winds. So during the period before the Christchurch earthquake that devastated our garden city and its residents, my coastal area is approximately 100 miles from the hit zone, witnessed mass harping uh, from this coastal fog. I could identify the coordinates because the cloud matter would form a V-shape as it was being harped. Okay, so the point of emanation were the coordinates I took. Now, I couldn't line these coordinates up with any land mass. There were two separate points that they were being transmitted from. So I gathered that we were dealing with floating antennae or satellites. So this, that research took me on a plethora of, of floating weaponization possibilities. These fogs are now visible around every nation. It's more than obvious to me that these uh, fog banks are being used, you know, perhaps to hide military activity. What other uses might this bad camouflage be for? Do you have any knowledge about what is in that fog chemical mix and how will that impact our, on our marine life? I don't have really any knowledge of what's in the fog, um, although salt particles are beginning to show up more and more because there's um, uh, several uh, companies now are engaged in cloud, white, cloud whitening over uh, the Pacific Ocean, as an example, to whiten clouds to make them more reflective. I do know that we have a persistent white haze here in Northern California, Oregon, Washington, um, all the time, uh, that that just lingers. It appears to be a fake haze. It's not real, and it appears to be jet-induced. And we believe that this is part of military activities out over the Pacific that are being conducted. And exactly what it is that they're using, I'm not sure, but the haze, um, is, is highly persistent, and also many people along the coastal regions are coming down with respiratory problems and breathing difficulties, sore throats, and, and many other problems due to these, this haze that persists here. Sure, we've seen, we saw a, a, when the, the heavy spraying was going on around the quake times, we saw a, a huge incidence of um, people being admitted to our medical centre. You know, we're a small town here. There's 3,500 of us. And within one month, um, over the period of February, March, we lost 27 people. That was one a day, uh, you know, within, within our community. And that was really quite frightening. Um, I have tried to take this up with, with the uh, doctors here, but, of course, there is... Uh, all the stops are out um, on this, so you know they go back to their their um, files, their government files, and you know, and then again we're labelled as conspiracy theorists. They can't see these things happening, yet people are dying. Uh, we had we had incidences of heart attacks and perfectly healthy people. 
um, you know, there's there's just no end to it. And and yeah, I guess we we've got to really move on to expose this um, before our people are hurt any further. We lost a hundred. Uh, you know, 180 plus people during the quakes here, and we were watching and recording. You know, a year prior to the quakes happening, the activities in the sky. Um, anyway, we're moving on. Uh, Kat would like to talk to you. About can the I topic. can I make one comment here, um, yes, just for your please. audience and for a general piece of knowledge about this topic? Sure. Um, one of the things I want to talk about just briefly is that uh, the United States Navy has decided to con conduct uh, five-year warfare testing programs in the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the Hawaiian Islands, the Marianas Islands, um, and other island regions um, adjacent to us in which we have an interest. And these five-year warfare testing programs are to uh, test new military warfare testing programs, not only over the land areas of the United States, but in the entire ocean areas um, that, that, that they say that they hold jurisdiction over. So that means areas between the Hawaiian Islands and Southern California, for example, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendously encompassing program in which they're using toxic chemicals, bomb blasts under the ocean, they're doing submarine warfare training, they're doing bomb blasts above the surface of the ocean, they're doing um, missile exercises, gunnery exercises, bombing exercises, they're building underwater facilities to use for submarine warfare testing. And our Navy, much to my disgust, I'm not, I don't approve of this at all, but our Navy um, is in, has 16 separate programs in 16 different areas of the oceans surrounding the continental United States and its island areas. And one of the things that our senators, not objecting, but have noted, is that um, the Navy is planning to increase the number of its exercises and expand the areas in which they may occur, and virtually every coastal state will be affected. They're not going to protect any biologically sensitive areas, breeding habitats, marine mammals, um, and they anticipate that we will decimate approximately 11.7 million marine mammals in the course of the next five years. I want you to know that um, many of us here are fighting these programs. We're going to try to cut off the funding for them. But we want you to know that this devastation is going to impact the fish, the marine mammals, all marine life, and that since uh, the United States Navy is not required to protect any of our national marine sanctuaries or breeding habitats, the decimation of these areas and these marine mammals, not only by the use of sonar, but toxic chemicals, will be devastating. And um, many of us here in the United States are trying to put the skids on this and to deny the Navy funding. And this is coming up this uh, later this year. But I want to say that this will have devastating impacts worldwide with what we're doing. We're already uh, seeing this, Rosalind. The one thing from our observations and, and prior to these quakes, we are experiencing mass beachings down here and around Australia. You know, a, a couple of days before these um, big quakes are happening, um, we're, we're being, you know, the whales are beaching. And, um, you know, that's a big sign. I, I can't tell you how many we have lost. Uh, in 2009, there were huge huge beachings around the Australian coastlines and, and it's devastating to us. In New Zealand, you know, we tout ourselves as 100% pure, clean green New Zealand, yet our marine life's being devastated. I, I, I love to dive. Uh, we, you know, as I said, we're on, on coastal land. I have my daughter surfs and, you know, they're out in this water all day, every day, all through the summer. She was caught in a near drowning last year where the, where the, the, um, 
the waters just rose up out of nowhere. Um, so she's she's now you know here the simple things that we take for granted. She she's you know been ordered out of the water. She won't be in the water this summer. We suspect there's there's some major military stuff going on out there along the continental shelf, and and we simply don't know what we're exposing our our children to uh, on that. I won't eat the seafood any longer, uh, you know, and 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 these are this just diving here. I mean, we use that. We we swap our seafood and we share our garden produce and amongst ourselves and our community. But I can no longer know that that food is safe so you know we're out of it's, the water and, that, and that's very very sad yes it is and it's devastating and that's why uh, many of us have committed and I put a site up about the Navy's programs and the maps of where they're conducting their exercises because I feel that this is atrocious um, and I am I can tell you right now I'm not proud of our country for engaging in and a lot of the things that they're doing, and especially this particular uh, devastating behavior. Well, that, along with that, and just on that, you know, New Zealand it was the mouse that roared. We said no to America and their nuclear policies. Their ships haven't been allowed in our waters, but they're here now. Our government have made changes to let that happen. And, um, you know, oh, I, it, it's phenomenal. And the average Kiwi has no idea... Uh, that, that this has happened and our relationship with the United States you know we've had Hillary Clinton visit to set up her Red Cross fund here after the quake and and then we had Prince William come along and you know all, all these people that we have never seen here in our country are suddenly swarming the place and uh, in bed with, with our current government um, so you know New Zealand wake up folks this is not just happening in America, it's happening to us all. Mm. I think everybody needs to wake up. Um, Rosalind, I'd like to talk about rocket fuel and how it relates to geoengineering programs. California Skywatch has had whole sections with information, documentation, and articles on the subject. What can you tell us about the basics of rocket fuel? and uh, the role it plays in geoengineering, if you could, please. Um, well, a lot of times um, uh, our military uses rockets to put up, for example, the U.S. Navy put an aluminum oxide dust cloud over the entire eastern seaboard of the United States in 2009. I'll use that as an example. And how they did that was um, through... In other words, their releases um, as part of the combustion process of the rocket. They, that's how they release the aluminum oxide.